I'm Haley. I'm Sean. And welcome to Haley Hates Everything. I pick a surprise topic. And I get high and opinionated so we can discuss it together. So grab a snack and hang out with us for Haley Haley Hates Hates Everything. Everything. Hi, it's me, Haley. I'm your feisty pal, and I am back. So welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I have Sean with me, of course. Hello. How you doing? Now, I am still sucking on a mouth mint. <laughs> a mouth mint? <laughs> I'm high. So <laughs> Versus like, what, an ear mint? or? No, it's, it's a breath mint. <laughs> there you it's go. It's very minty, and it's in my mouth. It made sense. Right? But no one calls them mouth mint. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, hi. I still have a, a mouth mint in. <laughs> and if I talk funny, that's why. I know I'm not supposed to. Whatever, you guys. It'll be gone soon. Anyway, this is a, a wonderful episode of the podcast. Are you excited, Sean? Oh, yeah. I am very excited. So this is what I call a Haley's Choice episode, (laughs) (laughs) where what we're going to talk about today, I already know about it because I said we got to talk about this on the podcast. Now, this is a TV show. It is a a series of seven episodes. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. While I enjoyed watching the show, it is based on something I hate. And that's why I think it goes. (laughs) I think it makes sense for the podcast, not just because it's something I want to talk about, but because it it is based on something I hate. And I'm so excited. So we watched a couple episodes of this show a few months ago. And I was like, no, we got to stop. We got to talk about this on the podcast. I need to get my head in the right space. I got to take notes. And we got to put it off for a little bit. But we're ready. We're ready. We're here. We watched all the episodes. (laughs) And I'm very excited to talk about this, this show. The show is called Finding Magic Mike. It's on HBO Max? Correct. You guys. So, yes. Is it based on Magic Mike, the movies? Yes, it is. (laughs) And I hate the Magic Mike movies. That's where this comes into play. And I'll tell you about it in a minute. But so the premise of the show, it is a dance competition show. They're looking for average guys who've lost their magic. I'm putting all this in quotes because average guys, we could debate that, (laughs) who have lost their magic. These guys lost their mojo. They don't feel like themselves. They need to make a change. They need to be pulled out of their shell. They need to be comfortable in their own skin. There's all kinds of different reasons, right? So they want to help these guys through dance feel hot and sexy and confident. They want to empower these guys and make them feel good good about themselves. They want to push them out of their comfort zone and help them grow. They'll be doing different dance numbers and stuff. And at the end, the winner wins $100,000. Now, when we watch the first couple of episodes... I got kind of mad because I thought it was pretending to be something it's not. There was a lot of like kind of body talk and we'll talk about that in a minute at first. <laughs> but I'm glad that I watched more episodes. Anyway, yeah. This is what the show's about and these dudes, they have all kinds of different jobs. They're nurses and chefs and there's a shoe salesman and a bouncer and a maintenance guy and a magician and a wedding (laughs) singer and a substitute teacher and a beer brewer and a lawyer and a personal trainer like all kinds of dudes there are four judges one is adam rodriguez who is in the magic mike movies yeah i know him best from wb's roswell he was isabel's boyfriend who was a cop i believe or a detective anyway For all the Roswell fans, I have two words. Future Max. That's all I'm going to say. Future Max. (laughs) Y'all know. Y'all know about Future Max. So anyway, please send me a note. Tell me I got you on the Future Max. I just want to see who's with me on that. So the show is seven episodes. They're roughly an hour long. 45 minutes or so. Of course, there's the movies that are like the founding of this but it's really more tied to the live Magic Mike shows like in, yes. in Vegas and stuff. Yes, that is true. Now, here's why I hate the Magic Mike movies. The only exciting parts are the parts where they're stripping and dancing. 
and not just because they're stripping and dancing. It's like the dancing is very entertaining to watch. Yeah. But those are the only interesting or exciting parts in any of the movies. And I don't really remember watching the first one, even though I know I did. I feel like maybe there's a little bit more of the performance of stuff in that one. Mm. The second one. Okay. I went with my sister-in-law to the movie theater to watch. (laughs) We weren't like extremely into it or anything. I mean, maybe she was more than definitely more than me because I was just like, okay, well, that's something fun we can do together. (laughs) And everybody was watching it. And so I was like, well, I want to see what what they're talking about. (laughs) I'm nosy. Anyway, we thought it'd be uh, something fun for us to do. And we went and we saw it. And oh, my God, it's real boring. (laughs) Most of it is Channing Tatum sulking and pouting and complaining about his life and, you know, being all sullen. And there's there's some girl involved. I don't know. The only entertaining parts are when they're dancing and stripping. And it's the only part you want to pay attention to because something exciting is actually happening on the screen so not a fan of the magic Mike movies <laughs> no shade to anyone involved they're just not my jam i will say from from what they showed and stuff the live performances look pretty pretty crazy i know someone who's been to one of the magic oh, Mike yes, um, yes. live shows and she said it was just just mind-blowing because of all the stuff all the extra stuff they do which you know we'll get into as we discuss but that it is really entertaining versus just dudes taking their clothes off or gyrating in your face that it it's more of a a show you know and so i thought that was interesting and actually, after watching this show, I want to see the live show. <laughs> and I don't even like male strip shows. And we'll, I'm going to talk about that later, too. But I actually, I think it would be fun to go see. Yeah. So now I'm actually interested in it if we ever go to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll go see the Magic Mike show. And it could just be, it could be research for the podcast when I could talk about it. Like, Yeah, true. Did it meet my expectations? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that research. Just for trying to come up with reasons to. Oh, you know that's why I went to go see it. It's yeah, for, it's for the podcast. It's, it's for the podcast. It's just <laughs> my my listeners demanded that I see this live show and report back about sweaty bodies. About all these hot dudes just dancing and yeah, and then I plus, didn't say I won't enjoy it. Plus I mean. there's. There's like late, there's this whole like water dancing thing, that, and yeah, the rain yeah, thing and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and like the the host chick comes down on a unicorn, a stuffed unicorn. <laughs> yeah, there's like a water performance. Yeah, there's yeah. aerial stuff. Yeah, it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I think they they put a lot into it. You know, I would say if if you're like. No, I this doesn't interest me at all. I might say like watch the last two episodes. If you don't care about like the people and what happened, yeah. if, you, if you like watch the last and two You just want to see the performance yeah. part of it? Yeah, I'd say the last two episodes. Yeah, you get you get them doing their the lap dance thing, you get them doing the oh, the yeah. rain dance thing, which is pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's and, pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah. And then in the final episode, you get to see the aerials and all kinds of stuff. So Yes. I would recommend at least watching the last. Yeah. The last performance. And and honestly, even like as a, as a dude, like kind of seeing some of the personal progress of some of these guys and stuff, it's it's you know pretty entertaining and yeah, I was gonna and it, it, it kind of like that, brings yeah. you in and and you know I certainly felt for some of the guys and stuff. So yeah, I mean as long as you're not you know one of these guys who's afraid of being seen as gay or something by watching this show, I mean just enjoy it. Also, like, it's 2022. Yes. <laughs> Get over that shit. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Anyway. You can you can go into Wal- Ulta with your wife or your girlfriend. Everybody's going to think you're gay. Yeah. Who still thinks that? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Every time I, like, go pick up an online order from Ulta, yeah. there's some old dude out there standing outside of Ulta waiting for his wife. Or there's wow. guys out in cars waiting in their cars waiting for their wife. Wow. That's just called being a douchebag. <laughs> My dad was like that. Yeah, yeah. He was not interested in <laughs> any thing that was fun. Yeah. He'd go stand like 
I remember one time we went to Payless and I think I was getting shoes for school and I had to try shit on because at that point I was probably a size nine or 10, probably a 10. And they did not make very much for that in girls sizes. If we were in there longer than 15 minutes, he would go sit like a bench, you know, out in the the main part of the mall or shopping center (laughs) or whatever. He'd sit out there and wait. And if he had to wait too long, you were going to hear about it. (laughs) so shopping with him was never fun because he was always just out there pouting and i was like no this will never happen to me when i'm an adult i will say fuck that shit so don't be a douchebag guys uh watch the show it is enjoyable if this is your jam if you love magic mike if you love dance competition shows if you love seeing dudes gyrate whether they can do it good or not (laughs) this might be something you want to go check out before you listen to the rest of this episode because we are going to talk about it all there will be spoilies so if you don't want that go watch the show and then come back to us but please do come back now after this point i can't guarantee i'm not going to start spoiling stuff (laughs) the guy's got camaraderie and you know you get to see him pulling for each other and everything so It's definitely not one of those reality shows where everybody's, like, against each other and it's just, like, mean catty shit, you know? For the most part, they're all, like, pretty positive with each other and stuff. Yeah, and I did enjoy that also about the judges. They were all so really supportive Mm -hmm. and compassionate towards the guys and what the things they were going through and the stresses that they might be feeling in these particular moments or challenges. Yeah. And were really quite sweet and kind to these guys. And I, yeah, that was something I noticed, too, that I really liked about it. By the end, the judges were starting to cry and stuff when they got to send guys home. It was very, it was quite uplifting, really. Yeah. Overall. And I didn't feel like it got super raunchy and uncomfortable (laughs) in those moments. You know, it was just really... (laughs) kind of enjoyable and fun indeed when episode one you meet a lot of the guys there's so there's 50 guys they're gonna whittle them down to 25 and then eventually they're gonna have 10 dudes who go on to the the bulk of the competition so allison falk and luke who i did not get his last name they're the choreographers and they just seemed so fun i want to hang out with them i want them to teach me how to dance they they were great and then the other judge, those so those two are also judges, and then the producer of the live show named Vince, he's also a judge. Yeah, Luke Brodlick was the ah. the other uh like other main choreographer. choreographer. Okay. Yeah, he was cool. He's totally cool. And super funny. So these fifty guys show up to this and they pretty much immediately have to strip down to their underwear and introduce themselves to everyone. Yeah. And so that's when, like, people's insecurities start coming out. They're all comparing themselves to everyone else. Because even though they're supposed to be finding average dudes who lost their magic, all that's in quotes. (laughs) Most of these guys are, like, toned and buff and pretty hot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. There's a few who are skinnier or, I wouldn't even say chubby. I'd just say, like, more rounded you know, and maybe not like so hot in the face. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. And so there, those, I guess, were the average guys. But <laughs> let me tell you, most of them were not. They were still above average. <laughs> so I did that find that a little disconcerting at first. Again, I watched the two, the first two episodes and was like, oh, my God, this is going in a different direction than it thinks it's going in. Um, and that's yeah. mainly because of Adonis that I felt that way. Now, Adonis is freaking adorable he's got a little belly and he is so funny and he's so (laughs) nice and just so like kind like caring about yeah very much so the other people and and we find out later he can sing (laughs) and he's got three different jobs but when we meet him he's basically like down on his body because he's got a little rounded belly and he immediately starts talking about how 
his body is wrong and he has to get built and lose weight to feel worthy. He doesn't feel like he has any value or worth unless his body looks a certain way. And oh my God, did I want to hug him? And I was so angry because he didn't need to feel that way about himself. And well, nobody does. But the way that Adonis was talking about his body and like, he had he didn't feel like he had any worth or value unless his body looked a certain way and that's why he was there he has three different jobs he had, <laughs> yeah. i was like oh my god you're doing so much and you still <laughs> you're still just basing your value on your body like that's redonkulous and so i felt for him but it also made me angry because it felt like some of the judges when they were whittling the guys down were still looking for and talking about the hot guys the the built guys the whatever mm. and making it seem like even though they had these average guys they were actually looking for not so average guys yeah that looked yeah. the part you know what i'm saying some of their language in the beginning made it feel like they were just kind of perpetuating the idea that adonis's body was wrong and needed to look like the mm. other guys yeah that really bothered me the first time that i watched it maybe i wasn't high maybe i was in a worse place mentally but the second time we watched those episodes again the second time we watched it it didn't seem like as big a deal as i felt it was the first time oh yeah yeah so it could just be my mental state at the <laughs> at the time or whatever <laughs> so it didn't seem as big of a deal but i still felt adonis was putting his body down and yeah. the language surrounding bodies was kind of perpetuating the idea that, yeah, he should change his body yeah. to look better. Yeah. And, and it just kind of pissed me off. But Adonis doesn't need to change. He's great. Yeah, absolutely. And Adonis, if you listen to this, I think you're amazing. You're one of my favorites. I, I feel like by the time he left, by the end, he felt more that way also. yeah and and so i will say i have definitely changed my mind about the show pretending to be something it's not it felt that way in those first two two or three episodes yeah but at, in the end i feel like not only did don adonis come to value himself and feel comfortable in his skin and know that he you know is worthy just as he is i feel like he had such a a big turning point in that and yeah. really did come to feel comfortable and feel sexy and really look at himself differently yeah, yeah, and not so much compare himself to the people around him, which is always the case in these reality shows. You know, when you're watching them compete like drag race, it's always a pattern we see where <laughs> the ones who start comparing themselves to everyone and doubting themselves, mm. they start to do worse. And it's because they're not just focusing on being their most authentic self. It's that they're comparing themselves to everybody around them. Yeah, yeah. Not being in the moment, enjoying what it is. Yes. And the experience and how it applies to them versus like seeing everybody else and comparing yourself and... Yeah, just all that stuff. Yeah, and then questioning, you know, just everything about you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So as they introduce themselves, they're being judged top to bottom, and they're just in their underwear. And so the, I think majority of them are some level of self-conscious. Yeah, yeah. Even like the, the, the one guy, Austin, who's just like ripped, stuntman. And... He was basically triangular shaped, you know? He yeah. was broad shoulders and a very skinny waist. Yeah, yeah. At some point, the the one skinny guy, Merlin, was like, man, you, you're just like ripped. And he's like, oh, dude, I feel so fat. And I wanted to like, yank his hair <laughs> and kick him in the crotch <laughs> when he said that. Y'all, fat is not a feeling, <laughs> okay? It's a state of being. It's a descriptive word. But not for your feelings. <laughs> and I, I fucking hate when people say, I feel fat. <laughs> Bitch, you don't know nothing about being fat. <laughs> it's always the ones who are skinny, too, who say it. Yeah, yeah. But at least, I mean, even when he said that, he was like, that's my issue and I know that or something, you know? Yeah, he seemed very self-aware, Austin. Yeah. He was, his parents were dancers and so he wanted to yeah. be, oh, okay, and he wanted to be a dancer. And I felt like he, you know, he was very serious 
Yeah, and yeah. he did know that he was having trouble getting out of his head and letting go. And so he seemed very self-aware about what his issues were and the things that he was trying to work on. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, good for you. Yeah. So these guys also have to do, first, first day, a dolphin dive. That's when, <laughs> yeah. that's when you sort of jump up and you go down head first onto the floor and then kind of kind of wave snake your body down so like head chest crotch legs and you kind of push yourself up like that am i describing <laughs> it right yeah i think so it's like it's like standing and then fucking the floor <laughs> yeah like yeah a, like in okay. a smooth move yeah <laughs> you just kind of jump down and fuck the floor just mm. yeah you, you might see boy banders do that i think aj used to be really good at that backstreet boys i don't know if i've seen new kids do that move westlife are not doing that move <laughs> there's no way um <laughs> anyway it's like an iconic magic mic dance move i feel that yeah, whole thing yeah. if you've seen Channing Tain of dance you've probably seen him do that yeah okay so that's what we're going for so as they're learning how to do the dolphin dive and dancing and and all of that you start to meet some of the guys that are going to be with us for a bit of the show so we've already told you about adonis who is one of my favorites there's also michael who's a very thin asian man he had very little confidence yeah he was a virgin until he was 30 i'm sorry i just saw a thing he's he's actually 42 oh really yeah Wow. Okay. Well, he's great skin. He wants to feel more confident for his girlfriend. He doesn't feel very confident in his body. I don't know why. Because when he <laughs> when he takes off his clothes, like his thighs were so great. Mm. And his body was very toned. I don't know why he doesn't feel good about his body. It's in fucking insane to me. It's insane to me. What he needs to not feel confident about is that mustache. <laughs> Trim up the stuff on your face. Get a haircut. Just get the... It can still be long. Just get the scraggly bits done, is all I'm saying. I wish that they had done a complete makeover on him instead of just a trim up, because I felt like he just needed some finesse in the hair region, and everything else was fine. Yeah. He was fine. Yeah. Anyway, his goal was to be more confident so he could please his girlfriend more, <laughs> so he could feel more sexy and be more intimate with her in that way. Yeah. And I and I feel like he accomplished his goal. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the time he has to go home. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already told you. Okay, and then let's talk about Ross for a moment, but I fucking hate this guy. I fucking hate Ross. He Oof. is a a <clears throat> military toxic douchebag. He was in the military. <laughs> he he has a hot body. <laughs> yeah yeah you know he's very he spends too much time in the gym i would say <laughs> he's very built he thinks very highly of himself and that's the yeah. main issue here yeah. he hates wearing underwear also most <laughs> of the time he wasn't wearing underwear they had to make him wear underwear yeah and he he bitches about stuff the whole time he's he's the diabetti <laughs> of the of finding magic mike for my rupaul fans so just think, just think toxic masculinity, overflow, asshole, douchebag, yeah, bro guy. Yeah, for sure. That's who Ross is. And boy, does he ever. That's pretty much every episode <laughs> he's being a dickwad. I don't like Ross. And then you also meet Merlin, which already he's got a name for show business. <laughs> he is a mormon guy he's very thin and he's very insecure about that he almost looked like like a more modern powder to me remember powder <laughs> i guess wasn't he like bald or something powder? yeah he's bald and like pale as fuck that's yeah, powder yeah okay. like white like powder like white he was white <laughs> like a white white that's powder anyway <laughs> He kind of reminded me of Powder. This guy, he knows that being in his discomfort will help him grow. And I do feel like he put a lot of effort into that. He was yeah. really trying every episode. He's yeah. also bisexual and he was 
pretty open about that and did help another guy real like come out about his sexuality yeah yeah which i thought was really cool like just the fact that that guy was being open and accepting of himself other people accept themselves yeah yeah that's how the cookie crumbles (laughs) oh and then we meet ricky who is a fucking (laughs) dork silly dude he jokes around a lot that's his his defense mechanism he's very insecure and he always jokes about being a non spicy latino (laughs) now i liked ricky except i didn't like the constant joking i wanted him to get serious a bit yeah yeah and his transformation is pretty (laughs) spectacular yeah true i will say yeah because ricky goes through it with trying to accept his body and trying to work on that defense mechanism and his insecurities and all of that and there was a moment towards the end where he's having a conversation with one of the other guys they're sitting on a couch and he actually looked serious in that moment <laughs> and wasn't joking around or, you know, just trying to be silly and deflect. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, Ricky actually looks hot now. <laughs> it was that moment where he like he didn't have that defense going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's also the other thing I found really fascinating about watching the show was seeing the way that everybody acted as they learn different lessons and grew Mm. you know each time yeah yeah to see those changes in them happen which is kind of cool about watching all seven episodes in one day (laughs) (laughs) you kind of see it all right yeah yeah and to watch that progression especially of some of them that just had a huge growth in this small amount of time like ricky to just be this goofy dude to have that moment where he wasn't that shield wasn't up i was i was like damn yeah this guy and that's i mean that to the show's credit that's one of the the things that they were very on about was that that you're showing uh growth and progression and stuff as we'll go over in in some of the upcoming episodes it's just like fucking super hot guys who could dance pretty well they they went home pretty early because they weren't growing they were you know stuck in their head and things like that versus you know some of these other not as like uh stereotypical magic mike kind of guys yeah stood through the show longer and stuff so yeah absolutely like austin again he was very technical. I think mm. he even said like he was staying up to like three practicing the moves. And I mean, you could see it. His moves were great. He was tight. He had all the choreo down and stuff like that. But like they said, they didn't see any of the joy in it for him. It was just all just technical, just getting it all exactly right. And there wasn't like any joy to it, really. Yeah, I thought that was a really interesting statement too especially for something like this is like we can tell you're not having fun and that this is becoming a problem and not not something because you know when when you show joy as a performer it helps everybody else feel joy and so i thought that they were specific about the joy (laughs) yeah Um, yeah. was uh, very refreshing to me yeah yeah and i liked that they kept an eye on that too you know yeah, and and as we go through the the episodes, there's kind of different themes and stuff, and those things even kind of come out, you know, on on like who is like more charismatic, and even when you kind of see that and you look back on some of the previous episodes and what people said about them, you kind of see, oh, there was that like charisma and stuff, and that's what people were seeing, because Ricky for sure enjoyed himself the entire time yeah and people saw that and people enjoyed that in this first episode the guys also have to learn how to lap dance they have to do lap dances (laughs) and oh my god it was so awkward because they they wanted to see how the guys read the cues and catered to the women like the cues that the women were giving about their consent and comfortability (laughs) with with lap dances yeah because not everybody wants that uh, I don't. And and the way that they catered to the woman and made her feel seen as they were dancing for her. So they brought in like real women, you know, just <laughs> regular women who would go to this 
kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that they were all various ages throughout the whole process mm -hmm. and all different sizes. I, I loved that there were some fat girls there. <laughs> I was very excited about that. So they did have, I felt like, a really good group of, of people to yeah. be the guinea pigs, I guess, for, for these guys to practice on. And so essentially what they would do was they, they'd bring in these women and the guys would dance on them for them, do whatever. And then the women were asked, how did that make you feel? How, what did you think about these different guys? What are, what is your opinion on these different guys that maybe we're not seeing or, you know, how did they come off to you? You know, all of that. Yeah. Are you, would you, are you attracted to them? Do they make <laughs> you excited? And so that was interesting too, not only to see the guys get through the process, <laughs> which I, I would not, I don't think that I could do that, but to get all of the women's feedback from the performances yeah. was really interesting to me. It was so awkward though, because yeah. essentially they're bringing these women up on stage, you know, four or five at a time. And the guys are then giving them a lap dance, <laughs> but they haven't been taught how to dance or what to do or anything. They've, they've been shown. They got to see a pro do it. Yeah. They got to see a pro do it. And boy, did he, that was great. And then they're just let loose to do their interpretation of that <laughs> yeah. uh, for these various women. And of course, not everyone gets it right. It, it's quite awkward. And all these people are watching someone else rub up on you. That's one of the things. Okay, so can we talk about why I don't like... My first experience with a male stripper was at my friend's bachelorette party. And this guy had been, you know, hired to come and dance for the group of girls. Oh, yeah. Like the, the policeman with a boombox? <laughs> yeah, essentially, yeah. And... My God, was it awkward as fuck. And the thing for me was that, I, you know, I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start having sex till later in life. Way later than most people. And I, my friends, I always knew I, I was a virgin. and I hadn't done anything. And it made me really awkward and blah, 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 blah. So I was always the target of shit like that, right? <laughs> so they pointed me out to this guy, this male stripper. And... He, he came over and made me hold on to chair handles. <laughs> like, so I was kind of bending over and then he like humped me from the back <laughs> and it was not a fun experience. It made me feel like a rodeo clown. I didn't like it. Everybody's staring at me like, ha ha, she's never been fucked. And this stripper's humping me. It was it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. And then the other time was when I went with my friend Nigel. You know him from the podcast. And my cousin at the time to a, a drag show. But after the drag show, it became a male strip situation. Yeah. And so it was primarily ladies. So my cousin was like, woohoo, yeah, you know. She's all about it. She, all of that. She's got dollar bills. And I'm just sitting there like, oh God, I don't want anyone to look at me. I don't want anyone to come over to me. I'm a fine with observing, but I just don't want anyone up on me. And of course, my cousin flagged some guy over, stuck a dollar bill in my bra. And then he proceeded to like kind of lap dance on me and then stick his mouth in my bra to get the dollar bill. <laughs> and while he put his my hands on his butt and his sweaty ass body. And the other I don't like the sweat. The other thing was like he had shaved his whole body, but he was stubbly all over. And yeah. I was just like, what is happening? This is not sexy <laughs> this is awkward and and awful sweaty stubble yeah and it just 
after that happened, I was just watching how all of these dancers would interact with other women. And it just did not, I don't like it. <laughs> it makes me <laughs> feel gross. The idea that these dudes are just like rubbing up on you in front of other people. Other people are watching. This guy's been sweating on everybody and sticking his <laughs> mouth on everybody's neck. Like, ooh, I just don't like that. <laughs> you know, I don't mind watching a guy dance and maybe do some kind of like strippy thing. I'm fine with being an observer. I just yeah. don't want anyone on me. And I don't really want to see it happen to someone else necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Like you just dance and be a performer and let me watch you. I don't want anybody coming to me, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know that, you know, some of that is my own issues with shame around sexuality, obviously. And then growing up, like, my mom was very vocal about how, oh, it's so wrong and it's so bad. Sex, anytime anybody was kissing on in a movie, just kissing. <laughs> She would cover her eyes. She'd cover our eyes. She'd make us leave the room. <laughs> she'd tell us to turn around. And then the whole time, as this is happening, as we're not supposed to look at it at all, when we know they're just kissing, she's like, oh, my God. Oh, they're so gross. Ooh, nasty. Oh, oh. <laughs> really loud the entire time. I'm not joking. For whatever this this amount of time the scene was, whether they were kissing if they were having sex, we were had to leave the room completely <laughs> or whatever. But she would just make this big scene about how nasty and disgusting and wrong it was. And so that made me feel a lot of shame yeah. about any kind of feelings I had, like crushes. Yeah. You know, any kind of feelings like that. Like it was wrong. I wasn't supposed to feel that way. I wasn't supposed to think those things. I was a bad person. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. taken me a long time to to be more okay with <laughs> with my sexuality and, you know, being sexual and all of that. So I still feel a little bit of that like embarrassment or kind of shame in even watching a show like this. <laughs> I know that I need to work on that. But it's like entertaining and kind of exciting. But then I'm like, oh, I'm I'm dirty because I feel that way, you know. So there's I still need to work on some of that. And also, also, can we? He put the dollar bill in his mouth, and that really grossed me out. <laughs> Y'all should not be handling money and touching your mouth and putting money in your mouth and all of that stuff. Money is nasty, <laughs> nasty. Don't be doing that. And that just grossed me out. Like, what is he playing at? Yeah. With your mouth. I just thought it was so gross to me. I would never. I would never. The guy we love to hate, Ross. Man, that yes, guy. So what we learn from the lap dances <laughs> is that Ross is very aggressive in his approach to women. <laughs> yeah. He immediately takes off his belt and puts it on the woman's hands and yanks her hands back he holds onto her like her throat yeah, and her he, jaw he grabs her throat yeah yeah and she did not like it but it was just very aggressive yeah to her and it looked like she wasn't yeah when he sure grabbed what was when happening. he grabbed her throat there was a definite moment in her face it seemed like versus she was kind of going along with the, the yeah she's like okay stuff. with the belt <laughs> then he grabbed her face and she's like what the fuck was that? Yeah. So it did change the tone of the moment for her. <laughs> and so that was an issue. And that was something that Ross was going to have to work on. The next thing they have to do is show their specific skills. So they have a little talent show. And so this, there's a guy who does stunts. That's Austin, right? And he yeah, did the stunts. Yeah. Ross played the trombone. There was kickboxing. There was impressions. There was beatboxing. I said fire baton, but I think Merlin <laughs> had those things. He was like, it looked like a fire, what people do with a fire baton, where you yeah. lean back and you're and spinning the thing. Yeah. Spinning. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> but it was some kind of light up thing. I don't think it was fire. Juggling. And one of the guys that will mean he was a runner that tried out for the Olympics mm. and what did he do run? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what his talent was. Did he run in place? I don't remember what he yeah, did. Yeah. I don't remember what Johnny did, but that's one of his skills. It's that he's a runner. So then they take the group of guys 
to go to the live show to see the Magic Mike show that they will be performing in. The last two who who are left yeah. will be performing in this specific show, and they want them to see it <laughs> and see what it's like so they know what they're getting into. There's this great part where they were doing the lap dance part where they bring the ladies up in the chairs, and then they do like a dance, and... They do a lap dance. It's one of the ladies was older, and somebody was like, "That's somebody's grandma, dog." <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. This guy is like humping the grandma on the ground, like yeah, humping her across the stage, across the stage. Yeah, like moving her, and it carried her and laid her down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're just like, "That's somebody's grandma." Do we have to do that? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to do that. So yeah, their their reactions to what was going to be expected of them was pretty, (laughs) pretty entertaining. So then we go on to episode two, and it's all about being confident. It's Mm -hmm. about growth, (laughs) attitude, and sexiness is what they're looking for. (laughs) And they have some rehearsals for a live performance that they're going to do. They're trying to learn the choreo and stuff, and this is another spot where I was like, Ross, really? And he, he says to somebody like, are you an American or are you an American? Yeah, I wrote that down too. Uh. It's just so, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> also, he said it to a black man, which makes yeah. it even worse. And this guy was having issues with the yeah. choreography and stuff. Like he has every right to have some issues with it. Ross is just a fucking, his personality makes him so ugly. Yeah, yeah. Truly. The the amount, the whole time, he's like, oh, I can do that. Oh, I got this in the bag. I can do that. Mm-hmm. And then he keeps failing because he gets too cocky yep. that he can do something better than everybody else because he thinks he's better than everybody. Yeah. And then he fails because he didn't put in the work. He didn't practice. He just assumed he could do it. Yeah. Instead of actually learning how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And that fucking pissed me off. (laughs) So then they go to this party for an older Asian lady's retirement or birthday or something. I don't even know. It's just a whole bunch of older Asian ladies. And they had to to perform. They they had to do a little 30 second dance, I think, where they took their shirt off. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like a lap dance, just not on someone's lap. Yeah. Essentially is what it is. And so you see the guys that we've kind of met before and the things that they're doing. So Adonis is rocking it. Michael, the shy guy, he was still being shy. <laughs> Merlin was ready to go. He yeah. was like, yeah. "We're let's do this. And Ross, of course, was super cocky. And... Which the judges were even kind of talking to each other about. Is it... Cockiness or confidence. confidence. (laughs) And he did get voted most confident. But that's also the thing is like, he's the epitome of toxic masculinity. And these women, as all women are conditioned to think that that's sexy or like that means confidence or like that's something good because that's what society wants guys to be like like that's sort of the stereotypical douchebag kind of thing but a lot of people don't think that's a douchebag they think that's being a man yeah and and so i was very disappointed in the ladies for saying that he was the most confident because it's like you're conditioned to believe that he is and you're wrong his assholeness is masking something yeah he knows he's not good enough that's why he's acting like a douchebag yeah and this is an episode where Ross, he said, being dominated is appropriate sometimes, and I want to show that to my boys. Yep, that's, he said that. <laughs> He's got toddlers or something like that. So sad. I just... He's concerned about showing his little boys that it's appropriate to dominate someone. And <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's like his starting position. Yeah. Is that. So his prize as being voted most confident is to be able to have a solo moment at the beginning of this dance that they're doing later on. Yeah. They want him to also show a softer, friendlier side to him as and he's smile. doing this. Yeah. They're they're going over more choreo. They're getting ready for this this main performance. And we kinda get to see Kevin a bit more. 
and they they get him to try and do this kip up mm-hmm. where where you're like on the ground and you flip up onto your feet and he tries yeah, to kind of push yourself up yeah he tries a whole bunch of times they finally lands it and and that was one of the cool parts was like everybody was really supportive of him and everybody congratulated him and yeah he worked and, hard yeah. to get that yeah so it was nice to see like that that camaraderie and stuff that that everybody was was so happy for him and i'm also glad to know what that dance move is called <laughs> i've seen nick carter do it live at a backstreet boy show it's pretty impressive also that's when he had a lot of ass which i loved by the way and i was shocked <laughs> that he the ass didn't mess up his kip up his kip up now it was like the momentum you know so i'm glad to know what, what it's called but you know the thing i don't think a lot of guys realize how how far confidence can go you know mm. even if you're quote-unquote average looking yeah if you're confident and you feel good in your body it can make you so much more attractive yeah yeah truly And, you know, I mean, I think men in general need to remember that their body is fine as it is, you know, they don't have to be this stereotypical bulked up dude who spends too, (laughs) too many hours in the gym and all this stuff. I mean, it, it was interesting for me as someone who has a job, like helping people feel good about their bodies specifically women and all of the pressures that come from society that way it was interesting to see the men and their body issues and the things that yeah. they were doing from from the pressure of society and all of the fucking rules and shit which aren't really rules it was interesting for me to see the guy's perspective and what they were going through Mm -hmm. because it is something that isn't really talked about that often is is you know men's body issues yeah and the way that certain things make them feel we don't really see that talked about too much because men in general are you know not supposed to talk about things and blah 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 blah. (laughs) bullshit you know so everybody everybody has so-called flaws or something that they don't like about themselves, but it doesn't mean that that's a flaw. And usually that's the things that make people more interesting and, and beautiful, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely. You become more attractive and really more amazing and interesting and joyful and infectious when you are confident in yourself and know yourself and accept all those things about you. Yeah, and it, it's not cockiness. It's just accepting yourself as you are. Yeah, it's more like it's more like a knowing than a showing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like people who are cocky are more like, ha-ha, look at me, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> But when people are confident, they don't really have to parade around and point at themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's just more of a knowing. You just move through your life differently. Yeah, yeah. And like people who put down other people they aren't confident correct that's like false confidence you know like people who who think they're attractive but then put down other people it's to make themselves feel better because they're very insecure yep very insecure about themselves i was really excited because then robin Thede was on the show oh, she yeah. came backstage to yeah, talk to the good. guys and if you don't know her she's in the black lady sketch show yep is that the right name yeah and she's on the Larry Wilmore show, which is where I know her from. Yeah, I really away. miss Larry Wilmore. I know. So she comes in and she's super funny. She's super pretty. And she basically wants to know, like, what is, where's their confidence at? How, <laughs> how do different things make them feel? And she talks to each of the guys yeah. and kind of gives them a scenario. Like, what if you ran into me with your car? How would you talk me out of calling the police or, <laughs> yeah. or you know all that jazz and no matter what their answer was she always had some kind of funny comeback that was like yeah see yeah. ya <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh and that's kind of where we meet we meet nate too who looks like a really handsome drake yeah, yeah. like a really handsome bulked up drake yeah And he becomes one of my favorite ones. (laughs) And right off the bat, they want to make sure that he shows his silly side, too. Yeah. And he was pretty kind of, like, there were little moments where he would 
sort of let himself <laughs> go and be silly and make yeah, a funny yeah. face or say something funny. And I just really enjoyed her being there talking to everyone. I feel like, too, this episode is when they started, the guys started seeing more of their insecurities and, like, really becoming aware Mm. of some of the issues that were holding them back or that were really coming up for them as they tried to push themselves through yeah, all of this, yeah. the way that they were judging themselves and their defense mechanisms. They just started to sort of realize what these things were or at mm. least see them more clearly. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. So then their their final thing for this episode is that they have to dance on a glass stage over a pool on the rooftop of the <laughs> Sahara Hotel and Casino, I'm assuming, yeah. in Las Vegas. And then there's this whole routine and there's a, an audience of women. The professional guys are there dancing as well. It's a whole big performance and they are supposed to get out of their heads and let the joy move them and be animal-like and sexy. <laughs> so they have all of this stuff to worry about. And I felt overall it was a really great performance. Now, this is the one where Ross was supposed to do a solo, and his thing was that these two guys were going to hold his feet and his hands, and he was going to flip his body in the, the center of these guys, essentially. Yeah, they were yeah. kind of flicking him over. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah. So... That was his thing. Now, he, he did it twice, and he got it on the second time and sa said, see, I, this is easy as pie. I can do this in my sleep. I got this down. After doing it twice and somehow doing it, he's like, yeah, I got it. Meanwhile, at the same time, they're going back and forth with this that Kevin was trying and trying and trying to do that kip up yeah, thing yeah. that they wanted him to do in the show. He did it over and over and over again until he got it right. Yeah, he said he had like blisters on it or bruises, bruises on his on back. On his and head stuff. and his, yeah. his back and everything from just constantly trying. And he put so much work into it and he yep. did it. So he's trying and trying and trying and pushing himself and not cocky about it. Yeah. He was like, putting in the work but he wasn't beating himself up about it he wasn't complaining he yeah. was trying he really wanted to get that done so then when you flash forward to the performance ross didn't do it he landed <laughs> on his ass yeah because he didn't practice enough and he didn't get it done meanwhile kevin nailed the kip up yep because he had been trying so hard yeah and working at it. And it, like right there in the midst of all these people and stuff, he nailed it. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was great to see that. And I wish that Ross would have taken a moment to be like, oh. <laughs> I don't, I was glad to see him fall. Well, I mean, I was glad to see him fall. <laughs> yes. But I wish that he would have had the self-awareness to start questioning his motives and his defenses and his insecurities and the way that he handled certain situations. Yeah. And he didn't have none of that. No. None of it. And it was it was cool to see a lot of the guys start really start to come out of their shell at this point. Well, this is when Giovanni, who we really didn't talk to much, he went home and Adonis was really upset and crying. Yeah. So at this point now, they're sending a guy home an episode until we get towards the end. And now, you know, now it's getting real because then they know who are the bottom three. Those are the people that are going to be talked to. And then one of us is one of them is going home. Episode three is an attractive man. In this one, they get to go to wardrobe. They all get a suit. They get uh, a little bit of a glow up, getting their hair cut and stuff. And I felt like this this episode, some of the guys really kind of, this was like, boom, okay, I see this now. Mm -hmm. You know? Because so, some of them, uh, you know, they were just kind of like, oh, you know, I got a dad bod, I'm skinny, whatever. But they get, like, nice haircut. They didn't even just say, like, appearance-wise about, being attractive and working on your attractiveness yeah it was like something that's fun about you or really yeah cool what makes or... you feel attractive yeah and that and that would then come through to the audience is you felt attractive and then that would come through to them yes in theory 
they get a fitted suit and they look sharp now before we get to to the suits because the suits were fantastic but they do have to um start practicing for this dance number that they're doing in the suits and so that's when they had Whitney coming. She's another comedian. Introduced these guys and they were supposed to show up in an outfit that made them feel attractive. Now, some of their outfits were questionable to me. <laughs> to me. <laughs> like Austin with the hipster overalls and the Amish hat. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why that made him feel attractive. I want to know why. Anyway, your friend Ross oh, decides to wear denim short shorts, flip flops, a t-shirt, a puffy Back to the Future vest that's three different colors of chevron, and an Australian Outback cowboy hat. Yeah. And apparently he's really, really impressed with his supposedly giant dick, and he wanted the outline of it to be seen in these tight-ass shorts that he was wearing. Yeah. Because then he just kept talking about how big his dick is. Yeah, there were jeggings that he'd cut the legs off of, so they're really short. Yeah, my specific shorts. comment was, he's not at a gay bar or a hoedown in Rednecksville. Yeah. He does not need to be wearing this. Yeah, this seemed more like he's from Arkansas. It seemed like this was like Arkansas pride. Oh, he's from Arkansas? Yeah. That explains so much to me. <laughs> I didn't know that. That explains <laughs> so much. Okay. Okay. That yeah. makes complete. Now Ross makes more sense. This uh, also, in part of this episode, he said that describing how big his dick was, he said it falls into the toilet water. I wrote that down as well. And <laughs> why would you want anyone to know that? <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to explain the length of your dick in that way? <laughs> Some of his his things he was gloating about were just very questionable. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> Whitney Cumming has each guy come up on the stage individually. She talks to them. They get to dance around or do something. And I really loved uh, that Adonis talked about accepting your individual beauty. I feel like he started mm. to see the the things that he was working with yeah, insecurity yeah. wise and how that was affecting him. So Nate, uh, hot Drake, not that Drake <laughs> isn't hot. I'm, I know that he is to some people, but <laughs> Nate is like hot Drake. He wins this whole attractive thing. <laughs> and his prize is that he has to dance naked with a fedora on his junk. <laughs> Basically, he had to do a strip down to his nothing, really, but he's yeah. wearing a cock sock with a fedora on his dick <laughs> during this show that they're going to do that night. And when they were doing the haircuts and talking about the, the glow ups and things, Nate even mentioned that he didn't feel good about himself he was talking to someone about how he didn't feel good about himself and let let me just describe this man he was at least six two <laughs> buff but not overly buff skin the color of a wonderful cappuccino or mocha <laughs> the most manicured beard i have ever seen it was yeah that was a great beard a beautiful smile yeah crinkly eyes when he smiles too which i think is cute <laughs> dude's got it going on and he was very silly he was very funny he was he was kind of quiet and shy but he he did have like a confidence about him yeah. but then when he was talking about how he just didn't think of himself as amazing or anything i was just like what the fuck here's the thing <laughs> what the fuck how can you look like that like yeah. this sort of stereotypical hot guy and still not think of yourself as attractive or particularly impressive or amazing. Yeah. Like the fact that someone could look like that and still not like the parts of themselves or accept parts of themselves is fucking bananas to me. He literally uh, had a quote in here when he was doing that whole striptease thing or whatever. He said... In my mind, I thought nobody wants to see this, but then they were all cheering. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> excuse me, have you seen yourself in the mirror? I believe I literally said everybody wants to see it. 
he's very attractive. There's there's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that he didn't know that blew my fucking mind. <laughs> Just like, are you kidding? I've wanted to see it since I saw you. <laughs> Everybody wants to see it. How could you not see it? I, yeah, my mind was blown. Yeah, yeah. His reaction to that, not what I thought <laughs> it was going to be. And I just don't understand. And there was a nice moment, I, th I think, before the main performance where Adonis, Nate, Johnny, and Austin were kind of talking, like, poolside. And they were kind of opening up, and and it seemed like a good, you know, growth moment on them observing the issues that affect them and kind of sharing them and seeing how, you know, the other guys also had similar experiences and took things a similar way and we're moving forward past it i feel like a lot of reality shows you don't see people's growth or yeah. them having a lot of realizations in that way or becoming more self-aware and i'm thinking of stuff like jersey shore and things like that <laughs> Yeah. There's no self-awareness mm. there. But it was really nice to see them kind of helping each other and noticing those things, becoming aware of those issues. I have been putting so much work into myself that it it's really interesting to see other people have those transformations and become self-aware because then I feel like I kind of become aware of more of my shit that I need to work on too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just kind of thinking about how they're viewing their issues, they're viewing other people's issues and the way that they're kind of choosing to tackle those things too. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. And so then we get to the suits and they all have mm -hmm. custom made suits. These guys look fucking snazzy. Yeah. Uh, Michael got a like floral shiny jacket that was freaking amazing adonis got a three-piece burgundy Ooh, yeah. suit yeah that was nice and it was so cool to see them put on these clothes that fit them well to see them see themselves and how nice they looked and how attractive they felt too you know i got a, a quick one for you here's michael in his suit in a recent instagram picture uh-uh. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> he got that shit figured out on his face. <laughs> yep. It's not there no more. Looks like he got a haircut. Good for him. Good job. And he's looking <laughs> snazzy. Oh, my goodness. Good job. Oh, I'm so glad he took care of the, the goatee and the mustache. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> Good job, dude. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Well, yeah, so seeing them do that <clears throat> made me get teary-eyed because <laughs> I I specifically wrote down, you cannot tell me fashion can't make a difference mm -hmm, true. in somebody's view of themselves because when you watch them put on something that makes them feel amazing and makes them see how beautiful they are for the very first time even when you watch someone do that and oh I'm gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> would you see their face change where they <clears throat> it's like a whole world of possibilities opens up for them yeah and as someone who has helped people like find clothing that makes them feel like that, it's like the best feeling to, when you see someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. See how great they are. <laughs> <laughs> and so seeing a lot of the guys have that moment where they're like, oh, my God, I look good. Yeah. Was really moving to me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cry. But it, it just was like, yeah, fashion is important. It makes you feel like you. It makes you feel good. It it makes you feel attractive. And, and that's why you have to wear the things that look good on you and that you feel good in. Because it does make a huge difference. Like how you feel plays a lot into how you look. And so no matter what you're wearing, if you feel good in it, if it mm -hmm. makes you feel confident, you know, if it's something that fits you really well, 
you're going to walk different. You're going to move different. You're going to look different. You're going to deal with people differently. It's going to affect yeah. so much of your life. And that's why I personally feel fashion is so important and, and really love it and like to help people get dressed because it does make such a big difference. And I know it's it's often seen as something that's so frivolous and stupid and whatever, but it does make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. And it is really, really important. We all have to wear clothes to go out. And why not put shit on that fits you and that makes you feel amazing? Because it will change every part of your life. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. So they had this big routine in their suits. They're dancing on stairs, doing all of these different things looking good in their suits they have like a cane dance there's a hat dance they do like four guys at a time and then nate has to come out there (laughs) and dance around the stage and be sexy as fuck and take his clothes (laughs) off one by one so he's just down to a fedora and he did so good whatever nerves he had about it going in because he was terrified to strip down he did such a good job and it the whole sort of routine seemed to flow really well. I wouldn't have known that he had nerves like that, you know? And then to come off stage and be like, I didn't know anybody wanted to see all that. (laughs) Bitch, please. I just can't even. I don't understand. I don't understand. Ricky looked real sharp. Yeah, Ricky did look. Again, like everybody getting the snazzy suit. It was just such a big turnaround. Yeah. Uh, nothing better than a sharp dressed man. I'm just saying, <laughs> put a man in a suit. I feel like Michael had such a big turning point in this. He felt attractive. Yeah. He felt really good. He felt like he was becoming more of who he wants to be. But then it was a bummer because he got sent home. But he was really satisfied with uh, his growth Mm -hmm. to the point where he, he did achieve what he wanted. He felt better in his body so he could go home and give his girlfriend a lap dance. It seems like he came out of this pretty good. It looks like he's doing some modeling. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's a model for IT model (gasps) management. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. He's doing kind of fit modeling, editorial stuff. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, come on. This guy didn't even want to take his clothes off for his girlfriend. Yeah. And yeah. now he's doing modeling jobs where he's basically naked. He's in <laughs> undies. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Look at him. Look at his thighs. <laughs> he should be yeah. showing them things off all the time. <laughs> Good job. Good for him. I that I'm so proud of him. That makes yeah. me so happy for him. I know. Yeah. Oh Looks my like he's god! Doing great. Look at him modeling. <laughs> oh, way to go, Michael! I hope you hear this. We think you're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was rooting for you, and I'm so I'm so happy. So we're on to episode four. Yes. A charismatic man. They have female partners for the first time. Oh, yep. They have to do this rooftop vintage drive-in set dance that's kind of filmed like a a short movie. (laughs) Yeah. Musical number. They're they're rehearsing up there. There's cars and they got cars on this rooftop, like vintage cars. (laughs) Ross is flirting with the dancers and he's like, oh, we're the hottest people here. Kevin is loosening up. Now see, Kevin is also a military guy. And so he has that rigidity to him. But the way that it manifests in Ross is very like controlling and dominating and i'm better than you yeah and in kevin it's more of the the discipline of working at something but also he starts to understand his rigidity and then he needs to let go a little bit and be more himself and like merlin was kind of you know talking to one of the female dancers and stuff like that and i swear ross went over to her and started oh immediately yeah like hey your just eyes like, are gorgeous this guy he was flirting with everybody yeah. each person yeah true so they have they're supposed to mingle with the girls and be charismatic and that's kind of the the vibe of this episode right is the the charisma and so they bring in another set of women to the theater in which they're rehearsing and 
each guy has to talk directly to a, a woman that they bring up just regular people these aren't dancers and the guys have to tell a 90 second story and they're kind of being judged on how charismatic they are in this storytelling but the things that people chose to to talk about <laughs> were sometimes questionable like ricky decided to tell a story about how he didn't know how to have oral sex and i i thought that was I don't know. They have to tell these women stories and then the women have to talk about their sort of experiences having this time with the guy. Like, what did yeah. they think about his story? What did they think about the way that he told it and the way that he made eye contact or, you know, all of those different things that go into it. Johnny won because he was really funny and yeah. he had really good timing. Like, he ended right at 90 seconds. <laughs> he had this amazing finishing line. It was like a mic drop thing. <laughs> he did a really good job. So he won and he got to take Ricky and Adonis on a bus tour of Las Vegas, like a party bus <laughs> sort yeah. of double decker thing. And they were going wild on this bus. <laughs> I thought it was going to affect their performances, but <laughs> they still did a really good job. And so Johnny also got a solo in this video vintage video yeah, yeah. drive-in dance the <laughs> dance number they did so he had to work on that and also nicole from the pussycat dolls came <laughs> to the backstage to the the hangout room and got to chit chat with them and essentially they all did their their dances for her they oh, they yeah. did the what's the drop down snake one the dolphin, the dolphin, dolphin dive drop. or whatever else some just yeah. did like body rolls some did did jumping jacks it was like a whole thing so the the big production one was was pretty entertaining to watch and stuff and then they kind of consulted with nicole on who oh she... yeah she was kind of a judge that time yeah because she was outside of the whole process so she sort of had a unbiased opinion on people just based on their performance just based on the performance instead of their personalities yeah yeah and each guy or two had various little individual moments it, it was almost like little groups of people with the professional dancers and the the competition guys yeah would do a little number and so it was almost it was almost like multiple solos but i think there were a couple guys each sort of I don't know little vignette I don't know what you would call a, a dance within a dance and so yeah I, I liked the way that it was done I thought it was really fun again it was like 50s drive-in kind of thing so I liked the the aesthetic I liked the clothing I really enjoyed that and Merlin ended up going home and Austin went home. This is the first yep. episode with two eliminations. Oh, so right. Austin went home because he wasn't showing more of himself. He wasn't letting yeah, go. Yeah. He had kind of plateaued a little bit as far as any growth in any of yeah. the, the areas they were looking at. And then Merlin had to go home too. I thought it was really sweet when he was signing off. He said, everyone has some magic in them. They just have to be confident enough to let it shine a little bit. Oh. And I thought that was really sweet. That yeah. made me tear up. Obviously, Ross didn't win the charismatic one because I wouldn't say he is. And at the end of it, the end of that episode, he's like, I know the man I want to be, and I'm fucking crushing it. Oh, what's that one? <laughs> this is Ross. This is the kind of guy Ross is, you yeah. guys. Every, he, he didn't actually make any growth in this episode or anything, but... Well, I don't think... In, I would say yeah, in the whole episode... in no. the whole series he didn't make any growth true true i'm sure he thinks he did but yeah. he did not especially when we tell you how he left <laughs> <laughs> so anyway episode five is a talented man so they are looking at the, the talent the the connection with the audience that whole thing so this is when they start doing the aerial yeah they start work training Yes, the, the aerial area. dance. So it's like these big braided cords yeah. that come down. And then the people sort of twirl around in them. All and kinds of it's stuff. like it's, an it's acrobatic crazy. dance. I Yeah, I don't know how else to describe it if you haven't seen anything like that. Other than, holy fuck, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> there has yeah. to be so much, especially like upper body strength and... Well, I mean, your whole body, because at yeah. some point your thighs are just kind of holding on to things. You're using all those those leg muscles to hold someone else up. Like, 
It's intense <laughs> and insane. I think at some point Kevin mentions that from the aerial training, he started to feel like his armpits had muscles. Because <laughs> the, the, yeah, the trainer the lady said, is like, right. there's going to be like all kinds of muscles that are that you don't <sighs> use that are going to get used on this. Man. And stuff. So, of course, Ross thinks he can do anything and he's perfect at everything. And <laughs> he is sort of the teacher's favorite for this aerial thing, surprisingly. I think it's just because he had so much strength. Yeah. Because he did have a very sort of bulky, built body. Yeah. So... I didn't think he was going to be good at this because I didn't think he was kind of streamlined enough. You know, he's just kind mm-hmm. of very sort of bulky in that way. He didn't look, I would say, graceful per se, just because of the physicality of his body. But he did really well at it, I think, because he was so strong. So anyway, he became the teacher's favorite, and I hated seeing him doing good at anything. <laughs> because he is such an asshole, so you want him to fail. But uh, because of all the spinning in the air, he had to get down and throw up off the stage. <laughs> yes, that was. So he vomited quite a bit <laughs> off the stage because he he got the sickness from spinning around. <laughs> so I think this is also when COVID started to happen because then they made a point to show you that the guys had specific rules where they had to be in their hotel room all the time. And it was really making an impact on them because they weren't able to socialize like they had been doing. Yeah. And they had to just stay in their hotel room. They couldn't really speak to anyone. They were alone. And it was kind of affecting them mentally and physically. And they were trying to still practice their their dancing in their room and dealing with the sort of boredom of it all because it's just a hotel room. In Vegas, and they probably thought they would be able to go out and do stuff. So they make a, you know, a big thing about that and how these guys are stuck in their hotel rooms and they have very specific rules about not fraternizing with anyone. So then Ricky comes out of his shell a little bit more and starts talking about his childhood and why he acts funny. And it really was kind of a turning point for him because that's when he, after that, he started acting a little more serious because he had sort of, I guess, started dealing with that maybe more head on and that's when he just got so much more attractive when he let go of that defense there's the part where him and adonis were talking and they both kind of brought up like how much they felt supported by everybody else in the group and stuff and that that was really helping them and from my classwork that's called co-regulating Oh. And community is very important for co-regulation. We're not supposed to be individual people doing things on our own. We're supposed to have community. Mm. We're mm-hmm. supposed to have people in our corner rooting for us and yeah. helping us and us helping them and all of that. Co-regulation. It's good for the nervous system. <laughs> so they're supposed to do a big dance on some scaffolding for this particular number. It's going to be out in the desert, yada, yada. Well, This is when someone finds out, some staff member, some producer, whatever, finds out that Ross has a friend in his room. Mm -hmm. A friend, an escort, a hooker, we don't know. Yeah. Someone was in Ross's room and he was supposed to be alone because COVID. And they went to ask him, hey, you're violating the rules. Do you have someone in your room? And Ross goes, banana cakes. Uh, Yeah. And kind of assaults the camera person. I don't know if he just kind of slapped him or hit him. I don't know exactly what he did. But essentially got really mad and assaulted this person. So he had to leave. Yep. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. Because I didn't (laughs) want him around. And he went out in the fashion that shows off his personality. Yeah. That's who Ross is. And I was very disappointed in him, of course, because it would have been great to see him change. But boy, I'm glad he went home because he was great and on my nerves. So as they're rehearsing for this scaffolding number in the desert, there's a trampoline where they got to jump down. The whole thing. During the last rehearsal, Kevin jumps down onto the trampoline at a wrong angle. I don't know exactly what happened. And he breaks his leg. Compound fracture. Like. Which means the bone sticking through the skin. Yeah. And so they have to get him to the hospital. He he held up good. (laughs) I don't know how he did that. They were attributing it to his military training. He must have 
gone to some place in his head where the pain wasn't as bad and he was able to get through it. But Later on, he also said that they they gave him some ketamine. Oh, yeah, that'll help. <laughs> that'll help. And so this is when they do their little talent thing. Now, they had to change it up because at that point they had lost Ross and Kevin unexpectedly. So Adonis sings. So they kind of shoot it like a music video. And it looks like a one take. Which yeah. is even more impressive, <laughs> if that's the way it was. But Adonis sings, and you're like, oh my god, dude, you can <laughs> sing. It was like he was in Boys to Men. Like, he did so good. And I was, I was really blown away. And then, of course, Kevin is injured, so he doesn't get to do his, his I don't know, double-ended lightsaber thing he was going to do <laughs> with the stick. What is it? What do they call the sort of... um... Bow staff or something, I think. Okay, okay, that. So the choreographer, Luke, did it, and it was really cool. Because there was a part where it was just really fast, whipping it around, blah, blah, blah. Great job. Ricky rapped. (laughs) Yeah. Ricky did a rap. He had some flow. He did great. Yeah. I was like, where is this guy? Where has (laughs) this guy been? Who is this? It was so crazy. Nate played the drums, which was also very cool to me. I wish I was a drummer. It was a dream at at a time. (laughs) And then Johnny danced. He'd had like a zombie dance or something because he liked zombies, I guess. And so they did this whole thing. It turned out well, especially for all the things that happened heading into that. Yeah. And then they have to do a lap dance. And so each guy went in and danced for these ladies. And of course, the ladies had their opinions. Now for this one, it was a smaller group of women. And the guys then went out into this group of women. I think maybe this was with the connection. They wanted the connection with the women. They wanted them to still, again, feel the cues from the ladies and what was yeah, comfortable yeah. for them and all of that. Again, it was cool to see women of all ages. There was a couple of older ladies there. One, the professional dancer, did a lab dance for her to kind of show what that was expected of these guys. And and then they went out and did it. And most most of it was good feedback. Adonis <laughs> was the only one that went to the older ladies. And yeah. they were like, you know, at these things, I know I'm old, but I'm not dead. (laughs) So I want people to treat me nice too, instead of just going straight to the young ladies, you know? So it was interesting. I really liked seeing the different women, all of the different kinds of women. It was just, it wasn't just young chicks. It wasn't just, you know, skinny white girls. It was was a whole (laughs) bunch of different people. And I liked that they had people of different ages and again, fat ladies too. That made me very happy. So then now things get to go pretty fast here because we're on to episode six. This is the penultimate episode, as they say. And we go straight back into lap dances where they're like lifting women in the air and like things are happening. They were let out into the crowd at a Magic Mike show. They all had different sections. And they essentially had to go lap dance for people in those sections. So they were going to the men, the women. They were yeah. they were grinding and <laughs> body rolling and humping and all of that stuff. And like I said, Adonis had someone up on his shoulders. Like, yeah. things were happening. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they were killing it. So then ricky and johnny are in the bottom of that and ricky is just not up to the same level as johnny and so ricky has to go home but he has been transformed like he's so much different than he was when he came in again he just has a different like confidence to him Mm -hmm. so it was really cool to see his transformation He, he had one quote where he said I came in as a boy and left as a man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that was Ricky. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it was really fun to watch watch his whole thing. So then they have to practice this water dance that we were telling you about. Yeah. Now in the Magic Mike show, there's kind of like this large dish, but for people. (laughs) (laughs) And it had water in it and they were like sliding around in it. That's like raining. Yeah, it's raining from the ceiling onto the stage, onto this giant dish that they're sort of dancing in and it's basically like like they explained it choreographed sex that's <laughs> yeah. essentially what it is this chick yeah. peels down to bra and panties they're grinding on each other they're doing all kinds of sex positions <laughs> but make it dance you know <laughs> and it's really hot 
<laughs> yeah. It was very sexy. <laughs> and they had to work with another female partner because they had the dancers in the vintage number and then the the aerial teacher, but they didn't, they hadn't, I don't know, if, like full on grinded with a chick other than doing <laughs> lap dances yeah. for, for regular folks. So this is an actual like dancing female partner that they have to do this very sort of intimate choreography with. Yeah. Anyway, they did a fantastic job. Yeah, really. So this is episode six. Watching that and what they did with the water dance and how well they did is really entertaining. It's yeah. hot, it's sexy, and they did a fantastic job. So at this point, it's Adonis and Johnny and Nate, who are the last three. And those are the ones who had to do the water dance. Anyway, unfortunately, Adonis has to go home. Yeah. He has gained so much confidence. Yeah. He was so much more comfortable in his skin and more confident in who he was. So he wasn't comparing himself to everybody. He's like, mm -hmm. this is me. This is what I'm doing. This is how I do this. This is how far I've come. I know that I've grown and I feel, I feel good. I'm Adonis, you know? <laughs> I was like, that's so fantastic to yeah. see. I'm so happy. And that was really when I was like, okay, you know what? This show has redeemed itself it's not what i thought it was being coming in it's more like what it thought it was being coming in yeah and i was really really happy to see that i'd found this people article about where are they now from the magic mike show oh really yep and ricky's has a, a girlfriend and he's a pursuing comedy okay. he took what the other guys in the show said and advice from adam rodriguez and he decided to stop selling women's shoes and uh, go into comedy. Wow, that's cool. That's uh, pretty cool for Ricky. Yeah. Here's some of his Instagrams. Oh, uh, Ricky's on the gram. Ah, he's got facial hair now. How's that his girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Look at his shoes. Yeah. He's wearing hot guy shoes. Yeah. He's, oh my he's gosh. He's got a cute little outfit going there. Yeah, he does. Good job. He looks a little like one of the Jonas Brothers from here. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm sitting on the bed and the TV is <laughs> that way. <laughs> but he looks like one of the Jonas Brothers right there. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's ah, cool, cool to see. And then, let's see. Adonis is, at least at the time when this was, was done, he's in back in New York. He's still doing, still working as a personal chef and part-time flight attendant. Oh, that, I would... I couldn't remember. I didn't write down his jobs. Yeah, he had a, a, a nice little thing that he said. I went into this experience thinking a dark-skinned boy with no six-pack couldn't make it far or win. To find those odds has put this battery in my back to fight for the regular guys. The guys with regular bodies and insecurities can definitely make it into this game called life. Having that confidence really helps, especially when you have been programmed with a failing attitude or feeling like you can't be as good as the light-skinned guy or the guy with the chiseled features. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Adonis. <laughs> so, Thank you. It's good to hear him moving past. No, I'm so happy for him. I want to give them all a hug. <laughs> well, we, we got to get to the final episode here, Haley. So, episode seven is the last one. It's called A Magic Man. We're ready to crown a winner, baby. <laughs> and the remaining dudes, so we have Nate and Johnny, they have to do 11 dances. They have to learn 11 dances in five days. Yeah. So this also includes an aerial number, these 11 dances. They have to rehearse every day from 9 a.m. to midnight and bust the asses. So this is when Nikki Glazer comes back to talk to them. She's also a comedian. She talks a lot about dicks and things like that she is funny though it's again nate and johnny and she's basically just like y'all do a good job i'm so happy for you lap dance on me if you want to <laughs> she makes some jokes <laughs> and they have to go perform they have to get ready for this they did get a massage though which i was very yeah, happy yeah. for them yeah that's kind of funny <laughs> they, they were talking about you know what they do with the money and stuff if they win yeah during they're getting the massage and Nate's a total uh, mama's boy, and he, he 
He'd take his mom on a vacation, and Johnny wants to give back to his mom for supporting him through all the years of his running career and stuff. Yeah, that's really sweet. And he's like, I can finally move out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when they go to do the performance to get ready, Kevin is there and with his foot in a cast. He's doing well. Adonis and Ricky come to check yeah. out the show. Um, and say hello and they all get to hang out so it was good for them to see everybody and kind of get a little boost and and watching the show unfold especially knowing how much work goes into it not just from their perspective but even just the professional dancers it made me really want to see it it does seem like a, a really fun yeah show. yeah and and they they show like all the 11 parts, at least of all the 11 numbers that they have to perform in and stuff. So you kind of get to see everything that happens in the live show. And it's it's pretty intense. I mean, there's yeah. just a lot of physicality and, and dancing and stuff. And then, of course, there is all the stripping and lap dancing. So they did have to also do the individual lap dances on the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where you could see them, like, carrying the women and, yep. and like the professional dancer did putting them down on the ground humping moving them <laughs> around and i thought it was cool because part of when they were learning how to be a, a stripper dancer guy it was very placed upon them like your job is to take care of these women and make them feel safe and make them feel happy you know, don't be doing stuff that they're not comfortable yeah. with. So to see them in the in that moment, they were talking to the women, making sure it was okay <laughs> if they picked them up. You could just see them having those little conversations as as things were happening. And they did have that ability to kind of safely move these women around and and still have a good time with them so they really did rock it I, they did such a great job all of the performances the aerial number was super impressive oh, all wow. of the stuff that goes into that with the way they had to balance their bodies and the way that the cords had to move very specifically i mean you're not just worried about yourself in that situation. You have someone else that's depending on yeah. you, that's doing the dance with you. Some I, of those things, and you see them, you're like, oh my gosh, he's going to fall. Yeah. You know, but... I was terrified. It's all like part of the performance. It's yeah. It's just like, geez. They did such a good job. Yeah. I was so impressed yeah, really. with their ability to do all of that. It, it, was, it was really, really cool. So after they've done all these performances, then they have to crown the winner. And, man, it yeah. would have been such a hard thing Because they were both, yeah, just amazing. So I think it really must have just come down to kind of like the growth, I guess. So Johnny won. Yep. Johnny won the money. And they actually ended up both getting job offers to be in the Magic Mike show. So a win-win for everybody <laughs> involved. Indeed. And again, like overall, I really enjoyed watching the show. The things that frustrated me when I watched those first two episodes the first time weren't as big of a deal the second time around. Yeah. And having gotten over those two episodes and just the way that it was seeming, it really did. I felt like it redeemed itself and really did have that kind of heart about it that you you wanted it to, that it thought it had by the end of it. And it was really, it was just really joyous to see the guys develop their sense of self a bit and that self-acceptance and just like changing and growing and coming out of their shell or seeing their, their worth as human beings. It was really fun to watch. So I'm really glad yeah. that we, I'm really glad that we watched it. Indeed. So I'm sure you're interested to know what Johnny and Nate are doing. I do. What's going on? Well, they're both cast on Magic Mike. Oh, yay! Yep, Magic Mike Live. I think they're in Vegas. Here's a oh, little bit. Of Johnny's Look got some, some... Badass plaid black and red jacket on. Oh, these are cool photos. I like some cool got photos tight done. jeans. He's being a cool guy. <laughs> and yeah, Nate, he even got to do... Looks like he got to do his drumming. Oh, really? In the show? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so the whole platform's coming down. Wow, he has like a show. lighted platform he gets to be on. That's it, awesome. Go ahead, Nate. 
Yeah, and apparently, I don't know, he had this post here where, I don't know, he didn't change like what he's eating, but doing eight shows a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So this is his body transformation to doing all of the eight shows a week with all of that? Yeah. Oh, my God. And so basically, <laughs> he went to like, I'd say a toned body. His thighs are massive and his transformation is like much more slim and ripped <laughs> with this <laughs> this routine of dance he doesn't look as bulky though. yeah yeah he looks he probably does less weight training and it's more just all the dancing it's pretty crazy the just the physical aspect of it yeah geez louise that's something i didn't think about like having that as your job and you're doing that every day how that changes the way that you look and the different muscles you use and everything well i'm glad these guys are flourishing i'm glad this hasn't been a, a bad thing for them it's been a good experience and helped them move forward in their lives with things that they enjoy doing yeah it is a fun show to watch even if you've already heard us talk about it and you want to see it, check it out. And again, like those last two episodes are really, really quite cool to see the entire show and the water dance thing. Pretty fantastic. So if you just want to watch those two, yeah, I yeah. highly recommend it. <laughs> Indeed. So that's our show. I enjoyed talking about this. I'm glad that we saved it for the podcast. <laughs> I had a lot to say, of course. Six pages of notes. And we got through it all. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you watch the show, what you think about it, who's your favorite. Yeah. Have you been to Magic Mike Live? I want to hear about it. Do yeah. you have like a, a male strip club experience <laughs> that you want to share? Or just a strip, strip club type experience, strip mm -hmm. dance type experience you want to share i'm open to it you know you can leave us a voicemail you can actually if you if you record a voice thing on your phone you can email it to us you can just email us you can message us on instagram all the links are going to be there below you can check it out in the description you know how to reach us you have lots of options to do it. We can't wait to hear from you. We love it, actually. Yeah. And we will be able to share some of those things on our, our next episode. If you send it in, you got to send it in, though. I mean it. So let me hear about it. All your strip club, <laughs> male stripper, what you think about Magic Mike, opinions, observations, <laughs> all yeah. of it. Yeah. If you're a dancer, let's let's hear about experiences. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be just Magic Mike yeah. related. It can be Magic Mike adjacent. Mm -hmm. If you're the person, the guy who gave Haley that lap dance, <laughs> we want to hear from you. Wouldn't that be crazy if somehow he heard this <laughs> and then remembered my face, my sweaty little face from however many years ago. So embarrassed and pink cheeked. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I think I was wearing a, what was that? I was, that was our red and wild night. So I probably had on like a red shirt and a friend with me with really short hair. She was very loud. That sounds like every night at a male strip club. <laughs> a chick in a red shirt and a really loud one. <laughs> Anyway, wouldn't that be nuts if, if he recognized my voice from me going, oh gosh, no. Anyway, yeah, if you're a, a male stripper or male dancer, whatever you want to call yourself, I'd love to hear from you too. Like, what is your, what is, what's going on? What's the best way for a woman to react to you? <laughs> yeah, really. That, you know, if she doesn't want you to dance on her, what's the best way she can make that known in a nice way? Yeah, that's very interesting. I'd love to hear any stories about that. Yeah. You'd have to have a lot of, I mean, you got to have a lot of stories in that line of work. I would think so, yeah. Oh, man. You meet all kinds There's of There's got to be some grabby ladies out there. Oh, oh, oh R is, is there. <laughs> R is there. L let me just say, as a New Kids fan going to a New Kids concert... I can tell you there's some grabby ass bitches. And I, I feel like that at this point they've all said we've had our asses and our dicks grabbed when we did not consent. You know, to to the women's credit, this was also usually during like stage dives. So like where else are you going to carry them from? You know what I'm saying? If, if I'm there, 
I'm touching a butt while I move you across the crowd. Okay. It's just like how things have to go. I'm not going to grab your business, but I'm going to grab your butt. Anyway, yes, women are very grabby. They're very crafty. And they usually don't care about consent in that situation. There's, there's no such thing. So anyway, please share your stories. And we can't wait to then share those stories with all of our friends here on the <laughs> podcast. But also, if you share your story and you don't want us to put it on here, you got to let me know. If you share your story and you don't want your name to be known, just let me know. Yeah. I can I, I take care of it. Anyway, love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And I, gosh, I hate to say goodbye. But we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.